Hello everyone, Adam here from Vector3D, again covering Formnext 2019. This time we're going to be taking a look at my winners for the best of Formnext 2019, FuseLab, a small 3D printing startup based in Belgium. Now you've probably seen this clip in the intro, maybe one or two times if you've been watching my coverage of the show. Believe it or not, this is actually an extruder. We're going to refer to it as a rotary roller drive extruder. It comes under the bracket of what you would typically call a direct drive extruder, and it drives the filament down through the hot end and out of the nozzle. In reality, what we're really looking at here is an entire 3D printed design. It's not just the extruder that they designed and bolted onto some other motion system. There has been some serious engineering going into designing every part of this machine. So today we're going to start off by taking an overview of the printer itself and then we're going to focus down onto the extruder system, how it works and really what makes it special and different and particularly impressive compared to other extruder systems. So this printer is called the FL300. It's going to be aimed at the professional market and have a starting price somewhere between seven and eight thousand euros. So probably a little bit out of range of most consumers, but if you're prosumer or entry level business and professional market, then this may be the kind of machine that you're looking for. The final fixed price will be determined when the full production specs are known, because at the moment it's still in kind of the late end of the design phase. For the extrusion system, you've obviously got these unique feeding mechanism or extruders, and there's going to be two of them on each machine, but mounted to a single carriage. They do have automatic nozzle lifting, so your nozzle is not going to be scraping along the print. The filament that you're actually currently printing from can be fitted in the hermetically sealed filament drawer, which is just below the kind of main body of the printer, and that fits up to two one kilogram spools. Although the drawer only fits up to one kilogram spools, if you want to print from a five or 10 kilogram spool, you can just feed it in externally, so you don't have to use that drawer if your spools don't fit or it's not suitable for whatever filament you're printing. For example, if you needed a different filament dryer. They're also supporting an open filament system, so there's no proprietary filaments and cartridges, for example, that you have to use. You can just get any filament you want from anywhere, and this machine will just be able to run it through. In terms of the maximum temperatures and stuff like that, the actual design of the hot end, as far as I can tell, is not fully finalised yet. They're currently using E3D just because they know that that kind of stuff works, but I think they're looking at designing their own proprietary stuff that's maybe either more capable or more cost effective for them to be able to implement into their machine. The printing volume is fully enclosed and is passively heated by the heated bed and it goes up to around 50 degrees Celsius. There's also an integrated HEPA and activated carbon filter to assist in filtering out any pollutants, particles, fumes, etc. that are generated by the melting of the plastic. The bed, as I just mentioned, is heated and also has a flexible and removable build plate on the top. So, for example, like the Prusa Mark III that everyone I'm sure is familiar with, where you can just take it off flex it to remove the print and then place it back on the bed. The actual build platform itself is mounted to the printer via a kinematic coupling, which means any expansion in the material, which will happen when you heat it, doesn't result in any warping of the bed. And lastly, the control board used is the Duet 3 by Duet 3D. I think it's really great to see a Duet 3D board integrated into an industrial machine. So of course, by implementing the Duet 3, you get all the benefits that come with that such as the 32-bit ARM Cortex M7 processor, a uh, high-speed bus to a single-board computer such as Raspberry Pi, which I don't know is integrated, not sure yet, six high-capacity Trinamic 5160 stepper drivers with 256 micro-stepping, stool guard, stealth chop, etc, etc, etc. All the features of the Duet 3 you should be able to find on this printer. The only reason you might not see them on marketing is because if they're not adding value to this machine, they may not be fully implemented, but Given that that control board is there, you can probably add them if you want to. And now we get to the bit that we've all been waiting for. This absolutely crazy looking extruder. Right, let's get stuck into it. So of course, the main innovation on the FL300 is the novel and innovative extruder mechanism that has been invented by FuseLab. Where a traditional pinch wheel feeding mechanism only has one or two points of contact, the FuseLab feeder has three nearly vertical rolls that contact the filament over their entire length. In the current version of the design there are 20 teeth per roller that are in contact with the filament resulting in 60 small points of contact. The penetration depth of the geometry of the teeth are the result of months of testing, simulation and optimization. The final design results in a feeding mechanism that can generate very high extrusion forces 
if necessary, and almost no deformation to the filament when fed through the system. On top of that, the grooves formed in the filament are axisymmetric, meaning they don't have any effect on the flow when the filament leaves the nozzle. The most important property of the new feeding mechanism is that it's a synchronous system, meaning that it will always deliver 100% of the requested amount of filament. It does this in its normal working limits. If one would cross this limit, the system would strip the filament and stop working. Fortunately, this limit is an order of magnitude higher than what is needed for normal and even very fast printing. So except for extreme testing purposes, we never actually cross this limit. In fact, with the capabilities of the feeding mechanism from FuseLab, the bottleneck for printing even faster is only with the hot end, due to the limited heat transfer into the material. And they're actually working on improving this area as well, to allow for even higher printing speeds. And of course, we can look forward to some innovations in that area in a few months time. Let's take a look now at how this extruder or feeding mechanism actually works. How does it push filaments downwards and out of the hot end? The way you want to be thinking about how this motion system is working is by thinking about a ball screw. So if you're a little bit familiar with a ball screw, you know you've got the kind of the threaded rod up the center, which has not typical standard threads, but like half moon shaped threads. And then the part that moves up and down has balls inside that are recirculating and they kind of roll around for this very low friction motion system that turns rotational movement into linear movement. The one key difference here is that instead of the screw rotating to make the nut move up and down, the nut is rotating in order to make the screw move up and down. And of course, because it's an extruder, there is no screw and nut. The nut is the teeth and the screw is the filament. The teeth are all part of the brass rollers, which are positioned at the base of the carrier. And as they rotate around the filament, they form a helical groove, which gives you that screw-like thread and results in your net downward force, therefore pushing the filament. The three rollers are positioned at 120 degree intervals around the filament. They're tilted to a fixed angle and they rotate on their own axis as the whole carrier also rotates. You might be wondering how, with so much spinning and rotation going on, how it doesn't just twist the filament and turn it and curl it all up. There's a very small part inside the extruder which prevents this rotation. It's positioned as close to these teeth as possible so that the area of twisting, which does occur very slightly, is as close to the application of force as possible. As you look at this animation, you might notice how much rotational speed of the carrier is required in order to get any decent filament speed. The only problem with that is that NEMA 17s, which are typically used to drive stepper motors, don't really do very well at high speed. The faster you try and spin them, the lower the torque or the amount of force that they can actually apply. In order to overcome this, FuseLab are using a type of brushless DC motor. This is the same sort of motor that you might be familiar with if you've seen hobby FPV style drones. The big advantage of these motors is that they can spin exceptionally fast. However, they're missing one key feature. There's no way to index the position. There's no way to know what point in the rotation it's at in order to control the amount of rotation that you're getting and therefore controlling the filament output. The solution to that is to add a rotary encoder. So this DC motor has a rotary encoder attached so that the control board can understand the amount of rotation that's going on, the speed at which it's spinning and what position in the rotation it's at. And that's pretty much it for how it works. You've got some teeth that grip the filament some rotation that forces it downwards, and a motor that provides all of that power. The one big downside of this extruder is that at the moment it's incapable of doing uh, flexible filaments, so things like TPU, TPE, or Ninja Flex, whatever you want to call it. It, it can't do that. The, the way that it works is just fundamentally incompatible, it seems, with pushing flexible filaments. At the moment there's no vision to try and improve it for flexible filaments, it just there's no idea of how that could be done so at the moment is is exclusively for filaments that you would typically call rigid it's probably worth mentioning that this is patented it's not open source but they may be selling it to consumers there's a possibility that they'll just end up going to industry so if this is something you want to see definitely don't forget to leave a comment mention that you want to have this as a consumer product and you'd like to be able to buy one because of a design that's as special as this, it's quite possible that some very large company will want to license it maybe exclusively for their printers. And obviously that would be fairly disappointing for us in the consumer space if we can't get our hands on one. So 
Make your voice heard if this is something you want to see and you would want to buy one. At the moment, the price would be exceptionally high, much more than anyone would want to print, but that's just because it's kind of finishing the prototype stage. Well, I think it's a little bit more developed than that, but some design for manufacturer and DFA, DFM kind of stuff would need to be done to reduce that cost for a consumer market, but all of those things are possible. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content from Formnext 2019. I'll see you in the next one.